I'll show you a little, a little battle damage trick. Because I said earlier about the uh, problems I had with my spraying, not taking my time with it. Just reinforcing the brown a bit here. Going over with a second coat. Quite sure what kind of world this will be camoed on. Big yellow thing with some brown on it, but still, I suppose there's lots of different alien worlds. Um, now, what I'm actually going to do is take a little bit of black. I've just got Chaos Black, but black is black. Any black will do. With my old brush, take some out on the palette. And I want to thin it down again to about the consistency of milk. And Lumi. I'm going to go for my standard brush this time, because what I'm going to do is... I don't know where I got this camo idea from, but I did it on some... Uh, Imperial Guardsman once. I think I copied it off of a pattern on the internet. But all I'm going to do now... Black is just because it's slightly different shade to the brown. Just go around and every here, here and there... Just put like little black dots. Might sound like it's a bit like a cheetah camo, <laughs> but it's not. It doesn't look that much like one. Just very, very tiny black dots here and there. Not too many, just a few. I just think it breaks it up a little bit. Might be hard for you to differentiate between the black and the brown on the camera, but they are black, the little dots. Uh, what I'm also going to do very quickly with the black is just take. I might just use my old brush actually. I'm just going to take a minute to block in the black on this exhaust pulp here. Very messily, just so you get some idea of the difference of what some people do. Whereas, as I said, I'm probably going to do that exhaust port over there. This one in metal. Um, but a lot of people will just paint it up in black and give the black a bit of a highlight and leave it. It's quite a good contrast, especially if you're doing the yellows to the towel. Um, I have got a video on the on the website about highlighting black. It would work very similar to that video, how I describe it in that video. So some people will leave it as black of a bit of a highlight, um, and they do things like the gun in black as well, just for the contrast, which you could do if you wanted to do. Absolutely, you can do whatever you want to do. But I am going to give you an idea for some metal. A uh, bit of bulgar metal, which is now called lead belcher, I believe. On to the palette. Now this one you don't really need to water down too much, I still just put it on the palette because I do. Um, but metals, you don't want to water them down, really. Maybe a tiny bit, but I'm not actually going to worry about it with this. Straight out the pot. I'm sure some people will be gasping in horror at me, but metals tend to not be too bad. You want a fairly even coverage anyway. You can as well if you want to um, paint the area that you're going to paint with the metallic black first, um, just because the metallic shows up a bit better. Um, it just looks better with the black underneath. But bulk metal is a fairly dark metal anyway, so it looks pretty good as is. 
sorry if I am going out of shot, I know I've said it before, but it is a slightly bigger model, it's quite hard to keep it in the camera. Okay. Just like that. Tommy Cooper. Uh, while we wait for that to dry, let's do some little lights here. And I'm actually going to use blue. Blue goes very well with the yellow. So I'm going to use, what have we got here? Let's try some deep blue. And this is War Paints Deep Blue. Again, this is a very thin paint, so I'm not actually going to worry too much about adding extra water. I'll put a little bit on the brush before I go in. And actually, I'm probably going to need to use my standard brush, slightly smaller brush. Right, so I'm going to paint both of these lights blue. I assume they're lights. Just need to face myself quickly. It's going to be tricky to see. See if I can get it. There we go. Again, holding the brush very near to the end to get the control I need. This is a thin paint. Probably going to only need needs to do a couple of coats of this. No, just a bit I've missed on the metal, which I'll go back to. Pleased with the yellow. The yellow's come out looking pretty good, I think. Um, you can see, as I mean, that's the yellow more or less done for uh, what I was going for. Um, you can see the difference as well. So, I mean, if you wanted to, you could just have it this flat, plain metal, or with the, the camo patterns on if you wanted to, or you could do zigzag, like jagged urban camo patterns in browns and... It's just a nice contrast, I think, the brown and the yellow with the little black dots. And then uh, the blue. Tell you what, while we're waiting for all that to dry, actually, let's do some uh, battle damage, because I said I was going to earlier on. So, for example, here where I've messed up, uh, I think you can see it, where I've messed up the, um, the undercoat, there's like a kind of bobble here. Yeah, you can see that. Uh, just like a kind of bit where I've um, got like the, the paper where the, where the paint was drying, where the undercoat was drying. Whatever it was resting on has, has put an imprint into the paint. Like I said, you shouldn't have that because hopefully you would take your time with it, whereas I was rushing. What you can do with that is uh, take a colour like the brown. I'm going to use a bit of the brown here that we used before, the Battlefield Brown from P3. I'll show it to you again. A bit of this battlefield brown. And what I'm going to do is now work out where the underneath is. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line. Sorry, my hand's in the way, but you'll see in a second. Just a fairly jagged, uneven line at the low point of that. Let's do another one over here on this bit that hasn't been properly filled in. Just so you can pick it out a bit better. Here, where the wash is actually underneath it. I'll do some under there as well, just so you can see. A little bit of battle damage. 
So that's actually underneath the ridge. You can paint these on flat surfaces as well. If you just painted that brown line across a flat surface, um, and then you want to get yourself a little bit of the brightest highlight you've used. So in our case here, it's bleach bone. Just going to get a little bit of that, add some water to it. This is a very quick example of battle damage, but hopefully you'll get what I'm talking about. Just thought it was appropriate because of making the mistakes on the undercoat. Um, so yeah, you've got the brown line and then you take the brightest highlight colour you used, thin down, and then underneath that line, which in our case has been very nicely done for us by the, the gouge in the paint, you just draw a very, very thin, the thinner you can get the line the better, highlight line. I'll do it on this one as well, even though it won't make a lot of sense because I haven't actually painted the panels in. Okay, so there we've actually got the gouges in it. Um, makes it look like a chip in the paintwork. Obviously there is the actual three-dimensionality to that because of the mistake in the undercoat. But you can, if you want to, do that on a flat surface and it will still look like a, um, a battle-damaged scar. That is what a lot of people do. Just a little quick tutorial there, I was waiting for some paint to dry. Okie doke. Let us put some wash onto the metallic. So for this I'm just going to be using War Paint's Dark Tone. Yeah, I've thrown some other Little mini tutorials in with the, the yellow here, I hope. I hope you guys don't mind. Just to talk about while we're waiting for things to dry and whatnot. I've just thrown some in. And I'm just painting that all over the bulk gun metal. So again, because of the bright yellow, a dark metal will look very good in contrast. You can leave it at that if you want, or you can wait for the wash to dry, get a bright metal, like for example, Shining Silver from War Paints. And then all you would need to do is where there's these ridges, where the light is actually hitting it now, if you painted a line of Shining Silver where the light is hitting it, they look really cool. Um, and look like a reflection on the metal. Um, so yeah. It's the yellow with the camo without, the little battle damages. Like I said, some people leave it black, some people do a metallic. Uh, let's just finish off the blue lights and I think hopefully that's some nice ideas for you, for your, your towel. Uh, here I'm just using some ice blue from Citadel. I'm going to just take that down, get a little bit out. and put it here next to the blue we were using. And I'm gonna get some water on the brush. First of all, put some into the ice blue. And then what I'm gonna do is mix a little bit of the ice blue, just a little bit with the blue we were using before, just to get myself like a kind of intermediate blue here between the two colours. There are colours of blue that are intermediate between those two, but because I had the two on the palette, I just thought I'd use them. What we're going to do here with these blue circles is we're going to paint. So if you're looking at it like that, front on, we're going to paint the bottom where are we? Your left. Well, I'm not too good at the back to front camera, but this side, basically, down the bottom there, um, with a, a sort of lighter blue. 
in a sort of semicircle. Doesn't have to be too exact, but in kind of a, a semicircle. And you leave the top half, the deep blue, the colour you started with. Again, that might be difficult to pick up on camera, but the underside is brighter. It's on your left, isn't it? It's on my right, so it's on your left. Yeah. Yeah. See, I know left from right. Years of training. I'm um, going to need some more ice blue, because I've run out. And a bit of water in that as well. Everything where I'm not showing you the consistency and just saying a bit of water. There's not some secret thing I'm doing. I literally do just mean a bit of water to thin the paint down. Um, if there is a particular kind of consistency you're after, I'm trying my best to tell you what it is you want. Um, I'm going to take this ice blue and I'm going to go into where we did the brighter part and just do a kind of quarter circle in there. of the ice blue. Just like that. And then for the very last thing, just to set that off, in the opposite corner, so over the top sides, to the other side of where you've just put the blue semicircle, I'm just going to put a little dot of ivory, or white but just something really bright and a tiny little dot just to set that off and it will look like it's an actual little lamp. Just in there. And in Maybe you can do a smaller circle underneath the first one as well. Just helps it to look more like a reflection. Like that. And there we go. It looks like a little lens. So, yep. Yeah. On the circle. One second. You've got the blue. And then from your point of view, the bottom left, you want to draw quite a thick blobby semicircle in a lighter blue then a very light blue in a fine line semicircle, and then just one or two little dots of white in the opposite corner to where it's bright there. It looks like a little lamp. There we go. Okay, so we've got some standard towel colouring up the top here with the yellow. We've got some slightly different one with uh, some camouflage patterns on it. I've uh, gone through the different colours with the metal and the black, and now you can highlight that out with some brighter silver on these highlights here. Um, done a little bit on the light, done a little bit of battle damage. Yeah, so there we go. Hopefully that's given you guys some ideas for your towel when you're painting them up, but like I said, obviously paint them any colour you like. If you've got a particular favourite way of painting the towel, drop it down in the comments below, let us know about it. Um, yeah, excellent. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Look after yourselves, be good to yourselves and each other, and we'll see you again soon. Take care. Perfect.